Rajeshwari ma'am. Rajeshwari ma'am. Yes ma'am. Shall we start? It's time. Ah, yes ma'am. Yes ma'am. Start ma'am. A pleasant evening to all. Fact contrary says a good teacher is the one who can inspire hope, ignite imagination and instill a love of learning. Arne Duncan said that wherever you find something extraordinary, you will find the fingerprints of a great teacher. With these quotes, I am delightful to welcome our Vice Chancellors and Registrars of Bharadasan and Teachers Education University and the resource person Dr. Srinivasan Tyagrajan from USA. It's my pleasure to welcome Dr. I. Mukhishami, Head of the Department of Education Technology, Bharadasan University, and Dr. V. Balakrishnan, Head Department of Curriculum Planning and Evaluation, Teachers Education University. My welcome extends to Dr. Rajeshwari, Organizing Secretary of the FQT, and also to the participant friends. Thank you. Now it's time to introduce the resource person. My sincere thanks are due to Dr. Srinivasan Tyagarajan because now the time at USA is 6.30 a.m. Being the weekend, if this program is not there, we should have enjoyed the weekend. We appreciate your accountability, sir. Let me move on to tell a few words about him. He has 28 years of rich experience in the field of education in various countries like India, United Arab Emirates, and Oman. He has served as academic support instructional coach for mathematics for two years. From 2013 onwards, he is serving as instructional specialist Richmond County School System, Ajusta, Georgia till today. His doctoral research was on the assessment of mathematics curriculum from an international perspective. He was the prestigious member of a Bill and Melita Gates Foundation for three years. He has acted as a member in SAP alignment and EOC assessment review committees. Dr. Tyagarajan was, has presented and published many articles too. To add further to his cap, he is the recipient of the award Teacher of the Year in 2007 as well as 2017. Star Teacher Award and the Golden Apple Award in the year 2017. With this introduction, I hand over the session to Dr. Good evening, all. This is Srinivasan Tyagarajan, and I am you are able to see me on the screen. Ma'am, could you be able to see the yes, screen? Yes, yes. yes. Okay. And uh, thank you so okay. much. And good evening. And if you don't mind, my personal request is if at all we unmute our mics, it will be easy for us to um, deliver the content. Otherwise, it keeps getting distracted. Thank you so much for that. It is such a pleasure to meet all great educators to together in this Teacher's Day, such a special day. I would like to wish everyone happy Teacher's Day. You are so awesome and precious. I am pretty sure you all had a wonderful feast in all these four days with a great knowledge of wisdom shared by great resource people. Before I start my presentation, I would like to thank Tamil Nadu Teacher Education University and its Vice Chancellor, Professor Panchanathan, Vaidasan University and its Vice Chancellor, Professor Manishankar, and Professor Ram Ganesh, Professor Amuda, and Professor Rajeshwari for this opportunity. Here, the topic of the conference is outcome based curriculum. The title given to me is Educators' Perspectives of Curriculum Design. I, I wanted to lay out my session into five parts. One is how the my roadmap to the research. What is a few thoughts about the curriculum design to review? Constructivist approach, backward design, 
how it is getting connected to outcome based curriculum and at the end i would like to conclude with as an educator what is our role what we can contribute towards this a road map to my research i started working in india and i moved to dubai and muscat and i got an opportunity to teach different curriculum like british and american that was the inspiration for me to pursue that i wanted to see how our indian math curriculum is compared to other international curriculums so that is what we, uh, i think the thought came around 2008 and i was working on how can we start with and probably after a year or so came up with the idea that how to compare the british american and indian curriculum because we wanted to compare ourselves with the developed countries so that it will help us and my research objective is to assess mathematics curriculum of indian system from an international perspective to identify the differences in the intended implemented and attained mathematics curricula my research design had for the intended curriculum we have taken the content analysis and for this content analysis we have used different frameworks from british united states as well as cbsc and for assessing the implemented and attained curricula we have taken the descriptive survey in the content analysis for american system we have taken georgia state performance standard commission gspsc's common core standards you may wonder why we are going through all these things we know that we are having a multiple diverse audience so we thought that it will be helpful for the research scholars and med and bs students so that it will be useful for pursue their research and here in the united states we have a broader curriculum framework called common core in that one every state they personalize or customize those standards we call in the georgia state we have georgia state performance standards same way in the british we have a cambridge international examinations i have taken that framework on india we know the popular common national level central board of secondary education what all the tools have been used for the study the first one is the mathematics study habit and personal data questionnaire and the other one is the achievement multiple choice test in mathematics these tools have been derived and adapted from teams trends in mathematics and science study you must be knowing that one it's a very common and popular international study which compares the mathematics and science study all over the mm, world and constructed response test in mathematics has been created by group of educators and validated and the sampling technique we know we have to choose the appropriate sampling technique when you go for the research um out of all these simple random sampling and cluster sampling we decided to go for stratified random technique which will be more apt for this study in which for the indian system we picked around 142 samples and for british system we have 82 samples and american system had 112 samples i would like to share few of the findings of my study homework factor how the homework factor affected the students performance and achievement in different curriculum the homework factor has a positive correlation with the achievement of american students whereas there is no correlation between homework and achievement of either indian or british curriculum students it is a high time we need to revisit whether the homework is needed or should be 
incorporate the homework in our system or not. And then another interesting one is, usually we have a common mindset that if at all you involve in the sports or something, you will get distracted from studies. Here the study says that either sports or using the internet, these factors have no correlation with achievement of any of these groups, either American or Indian or British. The third one is the lecture factor. We know we are all commonly used for this, just giving the lecture. So I think around 90% of the system goes with that. The lecture factor is highly correlated with achievement of British curriculum boys, whereas it is very partially correlated with the American or Indian curriculum. Here are the, some findings about attained curricula. If you see here, I try to compare American versus Indian curriculum, British versus Indian, and American versus British. If there is a blank space, means there is no correlation. And if at all I mention, for example, if you see number multiple choice in the topic of the number, American students are outperformed than Indian students. Whereas with the, well, comparing to British and Indian, of course, British also outperformed in uh, Indian students. When you com come to the number concepts for constructed response, the multiple choice, you know that we give four choices, we'll ask them to pick one and there are chances that they may pick randomly. But in the constructed response, they have to express their idea and they have to present their thoughts. So I feel in, in constructed response, we are definitely doing great reason from our elementary school, we import that expectation of making them to write for everything rather than picking them as a multiple choice. So that is why I can see that very clearly here, the our Indian system students have outperformed both American as well as the British. The same thing repeats in geometry. When you see geometry, American students are performed better than the Indian, while when you compare to American and British, still American performs better. What are the recommendations based on my research for policymakers has been suggested? The first one is curriculum development must be based on the domestic and international needs. And the other one is the grading system and evaluation systems, what we are currently having to be scrutinized with the international standards and see how we can move forward. And even though we have a lot of challenges, we have the poverty, we have the population, we have so many different challenges. There is no way we can deny those things. In spite of all these challenges, we are responsible to see how we can incorporate the technology in our curriculum very effectively. For example, in my study, I didn't include the result here, Calculator usage also influenced a lot, but as far as my knowledge is concerned, we are not allowing the calculators till today in our system. Probably the changes would have come right now. Okay. So the technology incorporation is a challenging piece. Still, it is doable if at all we plan well with the different companies, public um, sectors, and we can see that what are private sector sectors, we can have a um, kind of um, partnership and make see that we can make it happen. What are the suggestions for further research? This may be helpful for the research scholars, how it can move forward. The technology integrated teaching methods in different nations may be investigated. Comparative study on effectiveness of virtual learning. As you all know that right now, the, during the pandemic, everybody has, almost everyone has moved on to the virtual. So this is the right time to start that comparative study on effectiveness of virtual learning, how effectively it works in each nation. 
and comparative study considering Japan, Finland, Hong Kong, Singapore, China, Taipei may reveal creative suggestions. You may wonder why we pick all these countries. We are going to see it shortly. Comparative study on cognitive domains. It is a very common topic, but we can it's expand that to the conventional level. But we can expand that. Study can be extended to compare the performance of resident Indian and non-resident Indian students in mathematics or social studies or science. We can keep moving on and we can expand that search also. In the curriculum design, if we see the components, we see the three basic things like intended, implemented, and attained. You must have seen my research design is based on this one. In the intended, we are having a plan and the goal of a research or in the design. And then the implementation stage, we are going, how we are going to effectively process and getting to the implementation level. Not necessarily that whatever we are trying to implement, it should be implemented effectively. We need to assess that one based on the outcome of the results and achievement of the students. So the attained curricula should be addressing and should be informing us that how effectively we are implementing that intended curricula. Now, when you think of the best curriculum, which country comes to your mind? If you don't mind, I want you to get to the chat box, just type name of the country which comes to your mind for a minute. Dr. Sangeeta says that UK and many people are saying India, fine Finland, Philippines, UK. Thank you, Ms. Prabha. Dilwani says India. Thank you, Dilwani. And somebody says, Raghupati says Canada. That is interesting. Arun Kumar Pasala says Switzerland. School. A couple of Philippines pops up again, and I'm so proud that many of us are feeling that our India is the best. There is no doubt about it. Sankita is feeling that Germany is doing good. That is awesome. Sweden, that is interesting. Thank you so much. I truly appreciate that. Okay, now. You must be wondering, why should I ask that question? Look, we, we must be aware of the PISA and TIMS studies. The PISA is Program for International Student Achievement. It is an international study comparing different countries' achievement in reading, mathematics, and science. And the TIMS is the Trends in Mathematics and Science Study, which is conducted every five years once internationally. They rank their countries. Based on these studies, I would like to share a couple of results so that we'll get an idea how it goes. And if you see the reading, in particular piece of China, and Singapore is really outperforming. Hong Kong is doing a great job. If you see the Finland, Canada are all doing awesome. And in mathematics, you can see the scores there, and all the subjects are reflecting almost the same. And you can see that Finland is around sixth or seventh place, but still it is not too far from the top. But in the previous studies of 2013 and 1998, I think, the Finland was in the top. And in the teams, if you see the fourth grade math, in this study in 2015, you see the Singapore is outperforming Hong Kong, Korea, Chinese Taipei, Japan. They are all doing a very interestingly well. When uh, I think the Finland is around in first top 10. 
and if you go to the eighth grade science Singapore the top achiever at eighth grade in science Japan Chinese Taipei Korea and Slo Slovenia also in the top five okay if at all if you see the recent results definitely there is no doubt that the Sing Singapore is really outperforming what exactly works in Singapore why not in other places every part of the system is integrated and interacts intensely together to develop and implement a coherent and sustainable action plan look at that cycle of great teachers providing a, a careful induction effective training effective professional development teaching is attractive selective entry this should be the cycle it should not be the case that i am not getting engineering i am not getting medical then i'll go for any art courses and then i'll go for a teacher so that will be a safe place it should not be the situation it should be that we need to have the patient that i'm going to touch somebody's life teaching is a very noble profession i have i wanted to pursue that one definitely we have a lot of teachers in that line but as you know few of us are go due to the pressure or due to the survival and if you see that how the pool of excellent teachers are becoming the support people like giving the training and professional development things for other teachers to become attractive and they move switch the roles if you see the roles the good central support good textbooks and resources the effective central leadership and good leaders and good professional development the effective central support these things are going to help us to improve the quality of teachers as well as the system then it comes the excellent outcome with the support of social support consensus and political continuity the curriculum is essential to every educational reform innovations in science technology and education will only bear fruit if they are embedded in curriculum guidance we all definitely agree with this idea uh, from the principles of practices of teaching and learning in finnish schools let if i pay attention to the finland curriculum in based on three essential ideas the first one is they are doing goals in the national core curriculum after that one the second essential idea is autonomy of municipal authorities sir, it is very interesting me. sir excuse me sir your yes, screen is not visible sir i'm sorry Please see now, ma'am. Yes, sir. I'm sorry about it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So in the Finland, as we discussed, three essential ideas. One is goals in national core curriculum. The other one is autonomy of municipal authorities, and the third one is utilization of teachers as valued experts. If you see this, the national level, they develop the curriculum and distribute to the states as well as the municipal authorities local authorities and then the local authority has an autonomy with the limitations to modify it and personalize it and able to deliver the uh, content to the um, students and utilization of teachers as valued experts that is a key piece in all these um, structures how can i utilize the teachers as valued experts if at all teachers are not going to step up and effectively contribute to see that the curriculum the expectations and the goal are met in a right way it is not going to happen for that we need to make sure that they are given enough training and professional development for unfortunately due to so many various reasons in india i don't see we get much professional development what actually required 
Other piece what I would like to bring to the notice is advanced placement and dual enrollment. This is another opportunity for the students, those who are going high school, they get a college credit by taking some advanced courses. If a student is going to perform well, he should not wait for completing the 12th grade to the college credits. In usually the developed countries, what they do is they have different boards like college boards or they partner with universities and local colleges. And they identify the students, those who wanted to move forward and just they wanted to take it to the next level. They don't make them to wait till the 12th grade to be completed. They give the opportunity to come to the school and they recruit the students to the courses. Whatever courses they like, they offer all the courses like, for example, AP Physics, Biology, Economics, US History, and Mathematics, all kind of calculus. The thing is, if at all, if you offer that one, if they complete those courses in the school itself, when they go to college, even though undergraduate in developed countries are usually four years, I know some students, they complete in two years. How is it possible? They complete required courses in the high school itself. They complete all the required courses in the high school itself for first two years. When they get into the college, they start from the junior year, that is the third year, and then they go to the senior year. So, that, that works well in developed countries. I am wondering how we are going to address these things in our current scenario and situation. This is the status of different countries and different systems, what going well in different places. Now, I would like to bring some limelight to the traditional versus con constructivist approach of classrooms. Definitely, I am pretty sure, or as you all educators, you must have, you must be familiar with traditional classroom as well as constructive classroom. It is very obvious that in the traditional classroom, the strict adherence to a fixed curriculum is highly valued. If at all you need to teach Pythagorean theorem or um, Boyle's law, we stick to it. But in the case of constructive classroom, you will be giving an opportunity for the students to question and expand the concept to the different layer and different level. So other thing is here in the traditional, learning is based on repetition, but in the constructivist stage, learning is interactive, building on what the student already knows. As you see here is a teacher center, in otherwise it is going to be a student center. Of course, a teacher is a hero in the traditional classroom. He has to be worshipped. He is going to be the sage on the stage. We all know that. But in the case of constructive classroom, that has been diluted and giving more privilege and preference will be given to the students. They take the lead role. Teacher's role is a directive and rooted in authority in traditional classroom, but the role is in Inter interactive and rooted in negotiation. Students work primarily work individually primarily. and in the constructive classroom, students work primarily in groups and cooperative learning takes place there. Now, let us go for a chat once again. Please type at least one constructivist approach we can implement in our classrooms. Discussions, I like that. The project is amazing. Debate in school, that is awesome. The debate is a wonderful piece that we need to incorporate. Imagination and understanding, Uma says that activity, I, I didn't see Dr. Isaac Paul saying problem-based learning. It is really awesome research-based. And Vidya Shagar Kumar says that it's a problem-solving skills, discussions, blended learning, 
oh we are in a virtual learning right now so blended learning is so powerful design thinking and venkatesh r says that thinking differently some people say it's outside the box learning activities dr raja mentions that thank you sir dr ratna says that problem based solving and dr rakshna anjun say seminars conferences students to organize that school eye contact and mind mapping being innovative and brainstorming sessions it is really awesome to see such a wonderful responses yes online teaching kanha lakshmi says that online teaching has to be done it is really amazing so as we all rightly mentioned the constructive approach we need to see that we'll share our responsibility to the students by giving all these strategies as you know that there are a lot of research on that one other example is peer teaching or giving the students the topic to come to the stage and and make them to teach or giving the topic and ask them to do the research and come out with the presentation not necessarily the presentation should be always the powerpoint presentation they can make the videos nowadays the students are all tech savvy and we may not be that much good in that but if at all you say they make a wonderful youtube videos nowadays so we can ask them to make the youtube videos and channel and you can ask them to do um allow them to make the flip chart they can make them to have a debate as rightly mentioned they can have a um, group like conversation so we can have a lot of different ideas as you explore through different channels we can in incorporate in a classrooms for that one we need lot of plan and if we go now we have seen about constructivist approach i would like to bring some light on backward design model we wonder what exactly the backward design model the backward design model is going from keeping the final out result in mind what is the goal keeping that mind identifying the desired results first what will students be able to do by the end of the lesson module unit of the course and then determining the assessment evidence how i am going to assess the students to be mastery in these desired results those assessments should be highly quality assignments or assessments sometimes what happens is if i am going to teach some topic usually what happens we try to pull some questions and throw to them and see that they got it or not instead what are the key points you expect as an educator the students to know to be assessed in that assessment so creating the assessment is a very big piece that we need make sure that all the components what we want them to know to be assessed at the same time it should not be repetitive it should be very productive we should see that the items are being carefully designed and it has been written very carefully so that data will not be skewed once you create the assessment you know what you are going to be assessing then we'll plan different learning experiences and the instruction what type of activities materials and resources will lead students to the desired results so this is the backward design model i we as a teacher how it is going to as a educator how we are going to help in the outcome based curriculum which is the topic for the conference as you see that keeping end result in mind designing the assessment and then planning for the instructional strategies and um, pedagogy and we are planning the lessons the backward designs um structure is that outcome based curriculum is we are expecting some kind of what kind of outcome we are looking for what is the need of the market tomorrow so that we need to prepare our students for example after 10 years 
how many doctors, how many scientists, how many engineers, how many mechanics needed, what kind of workforce we needed. So that is the way all the system works. Of course, education is a holistic picture. It is not only preparing for the job market, but at the same time, we cannot eliminate preparing them for the job market also. So we need to make sure that the values have been imported. We should make sure that all the thing, um, things have been taught, the content, and then should make sure that we are making them ready for not only for the domestic needs, but also for the international needs. Because nowadays, we are no more domestic. We cannot talk, say that I am from this state, I am from this country. If you go everywhere, you can find everyone. So we, we are in a situation right now to prepare our students to the international platform. How we are going to work on this one? That is the important piece that we need to pay attention to. As educators, what is our role as an educator? Beyond being lecturers, the lecturers, definitely lecturing is helping. We are not saying that lecturing is not going to work. But the problem is when you do the lecturing, only we are delivering the information that Effectiveness is not that much. But at the same time, if you have other ideas of changing the role as a guide, and we need to understand that as an educator, we need to step into the state of facilitator. Not necessarily that everything what we are going to deliver, we need to know. It is not needed. We can learn from our students. We need to switch our mindset that we can learn from everybody rather than I am giving the information, you are going to take it. We need to move our mindset towards beyond being lecturers. Professional development opportunities. Have you, as you have observed in many countries which are outperforming in the international platform, professional development opportunities are very, very, very strong. We need to make sure that we need to address this one very effectively. This is not that difficult. Only thing is we need to make sure that we have plans in place and we make sure that we ensure the ideas and thoughts will be incorporated into actions and effectively. We may have a PL nowadays, but I'm not sure who assesses the effectiveness of these professional learning opportunities for all the educators. And and when I talk about professional learning opportunities, I wanted to say even my role, even though I started as a math educator and I started moving as an instructional coach to train and support the math teachers, now I'm training almost all the teachers. So we, we, we can train our teachers and can move forward so that the experienced people can train others so we, we can address this one. The other one is, Influence of political ideology and belief. What is that influence of political ideology? We have a mindset that we definitely, we are all having some personal political ideology. There is no doubt about it. But we should be very, very careful as an educator. We should be stepping away from the political ideology as an educator. I'm not saying that we cannot support the party or something. It is fine. But whenever the policy matter comes into the picture, we sh usually the, our mindset is, suppose I belong to some ideology, if that party is going to bring some ideas, blindly we will accept it even without criticizing it. And suppose if I'm opposition party, I, we don't know matter whatever it is, a good or bad, we just say that it is not good. There is no yes or no answers. We need to be very constructive saying that even though I may have some attachment to the political parties, that is fine. But as far as education is concerned, these political parties are going to move away after five years. And these politicians will go away. But this system is going to stay here. And then the next generation is going to be affected just because of these decisions. We, everyone should understand this responsibility. As an educator, 
I will strongly say that let us try to keep our political ideology away from our mind for a minute and see through the lens of the generation of the students how it is going to be helpful. If at all the 10 points have been brought to the table, let me analyze each and every point and say that what is the pro and what is the cons, assess that one. These ideas are awesome, let us take it. These ideas to be addressed and how can we make it better? So that kind of constructive criticism should be taking place. I am so overwhelmed to say this one in this platform. I am pretty sure there are hundreds of educators, there are amazing educators present here. When you are going to go back, you are definitely reaching thousands of students. Think about the number of people you are going to address. I am pretty sure that definitely we can change the mindset of the people that let us not connect ourselves with the political ideology as far as education is concerned and try to be the strong professional body. How is that work? The thing is, when you have the strong professional body, as um, for example, here, the NCTM, National uh, Council of Teachers of Mathematics, like there are so many for each course, each subject, they have the, like, no, we have, we do have, um, AMTI and um, um, other bodies in India also. But we need to strengthen those professional bodies to make sure that when the policy decision making is coming to place, we'll make an impact and big role in that one. So I feel personally that it is so important that we should not be influenced with the political ideology whenever we are going to recommend something for the next generation, make sure that where we are going to take our students to the next level. If you think where we are today is not that much matter, but where we are going to take our students tomorrow, it matters a lot. So we need to definitely think seriously about this thing. Next one is partnering with higher education institutes. As we have seen through my slides, when we discussed before, partnering with a local higher education institutes and see that how we can type with them and see they will offer some courses in their schools. Even the teachers are qualified or the professors can come to the school building and try to promote that. It helps the students to think ahead and it helps to reduce the high school drop rate also. The around if at all 10 to 20 percent of students will move forward, then automatically it is going to reflect in other size also. Everything has the pros and cons, but we need to think about these things. Since it has some negative effect, doesn't mean that the rights to be denied for everybody. One shoe will not fit for everyone. We need to understand that and make sure that we address that. And guidance and counseling. For some reason, we don't have any guidance for our students or counseling. We all always we talk about them completing the work getting the grade it should this mindset should go away the grade is not going to be everything the grading is just a measure that's it but here in other countries one one, one day one of the student came to my class no um, i think in the morning around eight o'clock or something the student was so tired didn't complete my homework i was asking what is wrong why you didn't finish work say that and i was a little bit rude as you know we want them to do the right things. It is not that we uh, mm, intend to do that. The thing is, the child was coming and sharing with me, saying that I had a problem. I was working in a store till in the morning, 2 o'clock, and then went to bed. Morning, 5 o'clock, I woke up, and they caught the bus and then reached the school. I was in tears. This is just one example. Without understanding the students, we just to pressurize them like anything. We need to take some time to talk to them personally. What is going on? Sometimes at home, parents may be challenging. As you know, it is not always good. Sometimes they may not have a right peer group. Sometimes they may be having a social influence. Sometimes they may be having so many other distractions. When you give a personal touch and have a talk with them and have a personal relationship and connection, I'm pretty sure that that is going to be a big change for many of our students. And when the each school system should have a 
guidance and counseling. Not only about the personal guidance, we need to provide the professional guidance also. If a child is interested in welding, what are the best places they can go and make sure that they can get their education excellent in that one? We, we need to try to provide whatever opportunities are available in the international platform and local um, domestic level, make sure that the students are aware of what is going on so that they can prepare themselves to go to the next level. It is definitely as a teacher, as an educators, we are definitely having a very, very vital role other than the parents. Parents, they are very, very, very busy nowadays. You must be knowing nowadays, not like before, we are having a eight out of 10 parents, both the mom and dad are working. They don't have time to check with the kids and they don't have any time to spend with them. Only their concern is report card time. When they see that the grades are not good, that is the time we score and go, that's it. But as a teacher, it is our responsibility to take the parent role also. It is so difficult. It is not that easy. In the school systems and the college systems, we need to provide that support for these students so that they'll not be dropped out, they'll not be left behind. Each and every child who has come to this earth is so precious. Everybody has some purpose. If at all some child is failing, the child is not failing. We are failing as an educators. Our nation is failing. The world is failing. So we need to understand that the child is a child. We need to make sure that we'll try to give all the opportunities for them till they get into the place. So it, it, it is, you may think in the college level, they're all grown up, they're all mature. We don't know. Even the postgraduate students, they may need some kind of support. When you talk to them, they will come out with some different stories. I'm not saying that to try to listen to all the stories, but at least they need some wind. They need somebody to just you know shoulder like. So definitely they can focus on what you are saying so that your instruction is going to be more effective. And I think that's the thing. What are the thoughts I had? I just shared. Now I'm trying to open the platform for the discussion. And um, thank you so much for giving your time. And really, I truly appreciate all your valuable time because I know very, it is very critical, especially all the educators. It is, I am really, really moved, especially in this happy Teacher's Day moment. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. The registrar, sir, welcome, sir. Welcome. Ma'am, thank you. Any question? Yes, ma'am. You can ask for clarification. Any questions? Are you saying I'm audible, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So nobody wants to ask any clarification or questions to the resource person. Okay, nice, sir. You made the question. Interesting and informative. I believe that the participants also enjoyed your session, so that no questions. Sir. So thank you for the same, sir. Now it's time for a valediction. Ma'am, will you allow? Okay. Okay. Yes. Hello, sir. Am I audible to you? Yes, yes. Go ahead. Yes. Sir, Alexander of Andhra Pradesh. And uh, first of all, let me convey wishes to all the teachers. And uh, my question here is that recently announced the NEP, National Education Policy. 
NEP National Education Policy, sir. How? Not able to hear you, sir. Somebody asked a question about, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Um, Lakshman Rao, I'm, I'm not able to hear your question, but somebody was putting in the chat box that, how can we implement the guidance and counseling in the Indian setting? That's what, as the educators, as the school administration, the college administration, we need to identify some responsible and accountable people to assign this as an extra. It is not an extra, so probably a couple of hours you can be relieved from your teaching and you can be given the appointment for the students to talk to them. Sir, I am lecturer, sir. Am I audible yes. right now? Yeah, please go ahead, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, let me first of all wish all the uh, teachers uh, very happy Teachers' Day. And my question is about the NEP National Education Policy right now. So, how far the National Education Policy is able to cover the present needs of the people? In your opinion, I'd I like I would like to learn, sir. That's it. Yes. Uh, regarding national education policy, I am not going to let any of my personal views here, okay? But we are having the responsibility to address the concerns about it. There are a lot of great things and there are some pitfalls. Instead of discussing about what are the good qualities in the national education policy, what are the things to be incorporated in that one, we are all so imbibed in talking about criticizing for no reason, as if the whole draft is the base. That is that mindset should be changed. That's what I keep saying. It we should not connect ourselves to the parties. This is our students, our next generation. So we need to give a constructive feedback to them to make sure that they incorporate those things. For example, I'm talking about the guidance and counseling. Is there any provision in that one? If not, how can we suggest them to incorporate that one? Or we can try to compare with the different national curriculums and see what are the best practices work try to incorporate to mo by modifying to our system and our students because for us our students and next generation is so important you know Abdul Kalam sir, Dr. Abdul Kalam was mentioning all the time 2020 uh, uh, the vision but the thing is how passionate he is he doesn't get any ideology with any parties he is very clear that what message he wants to convey he lived to that until today we are remembering him so that should be the situation. So we need to go through each and everything without having any personal bias. We need to make sure that we understand and do the right things. At the end of the day, as educators, we are going to implement it, right? I hope I answered your question, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome. Hello, sir. Hmm? Go ahead. Hello, sir. This is a student, a med student, sir, myself from mm -hmm. Telangana state. Sir, I have a doubt how we are going to uh, relate curriculum design with professional development, sir. Sir, is it necessary in every aspect of life, sir, professional development? Th that is amazing. So curriculum design is uh, just a draft on the plan and the professional uh, development is going to be coming as a byproduct in the process. If you have a very good plan, if you don't implement it well, it is no use of the plan, right? How I'm going to implement the curriculum design effectively for that the teachers should be trained well with the vision, what is the goal to be achieved? I have a wonderful plan. If I don't know how to implement that one or the teachers don't have the awareness how to implement that one, it is not, it is not going to happen. So we need to make sure that how the professional development has to be delivered you know, for every field, we need to have the professional development. See, for example, you cannot be a doctor once you have finished your degree. You need to go for internship. You need to practice for six months or one year, right? It is it is very important for everything. The same way, as an educator, as you know, if a doctor makes a mistake, it is a risk of one life. If an engineer makes make a mistake, maybe a risk of a family. But an educator, when we make a mistake, we are a, a generation is at risk. So we need to be very, very careful that what we are doing and we need to be trained so well so that 
our role will be very nicely delivered. Thank you, sir. Thank you a lot. You're welcome, ma'am. Anybody else for us? Uh, sir. Uh, yeah. yeah, madam. Uh, can I have the question, please? Yeah, yeah, you can say. Uh, in our present trend, I am from Andhra Pradesh, I am Lakshmi and uh, in our college, we have been uh, uh, implementing open book examination system, sir. Yeah open book exam system so so that students uh, uh, take part of internal examination so we feel that we are getting very good results regarding that one so mm -hmm. in your opinion will it fit for the present uh, system sir is it advisable yeah it's a good question oh, no. the open book examination is not yes, a sir. bad thing it has been brought up with some purpose actually if you see, we are not expecting the students to retain all the information. Today, you have a cell phone, you have technology. You can just type it, you'll get everything on your hand, right? So we, we don't want them to take all the information in storage. Like, it is not going to be useful now. But when you keep an open book system, what we need to do is we need to make sure that the students are really reading that book in depth. You need to make the assessment such a way that the students will be able to easy to access it. If a child doesn't go through the book properly and thoroughly, even though you keep an open book, they are not going to do it. You, you, if, but your assessment should be strong enough to support that one. When you make that one stride, then it is going to be meaningful. If you are going to ask the question, which is going to be subtopic in the book, they are going to just go straight to that and going to give you your answer. So it is, again, as an educator, we are responsible for that. Thank you. You're welcome. Somebody put some question in the chat box. I was not able to read it. It's going. Anybody else? Somebody asked Shahid asking evaluation in that case should be continuous. Uh, evaluation should be a continuous process. It is like a formative assessment. You have to keep checking every time to make sure that you are tailor your instruction. That is very, very important. Every week we need to check that whatever we are expecting the students to do it are they achieved that level or not? Based on that, we need to tailor our instruction. That is very, very important. Evaluation and providing the feedback is so important. Sir? Sir? Ma'am, go ahead. Sir, how often we need to do a curriculum design, sir? Is it, it, is it only restricted to a classroom? Or to a school, or to a, uh, uh, or up to a level of stakeholder. So, at which places we are going to do this curriculum design so that we can bring changes in the student. Uh, I mean, uh, their uh, way of learning. That's good. That is a good question. The curriculum design we cannot stick to one person. Of course, it is the country's responsibility. They make a big picture, no doubt about it. But that as educators we can modify and make our own designs in the classroom how i'm going to deliver this one the way how we are going to make that impact in the students learning see they are giving some kind of objectives that the students at the end of the day they need to know these concepts and these skills i don't understand how many of us are very much particular about focusing on the skills and the application and the content most of us stay with the content and we don't move for the application part. We need to see that what exactly the goal is, how as an institution, how as a classroom, in my classroom, I'm going to make sure that those things have been taken place. Most of the curriculum designs will have a 
wonderful script, but as an implementation, as educators, we are not doing justice to that. So you can make your own to your classroom the way you want it, based on the suggestions and recommendations given by the state or central and um, your organization. Thank you, sir. Come, ma'am. There is a question called, can a faculty who has completed a PhD in category B make guide for PhD scholar? I think some of the organizers may answer the question. I don't have an answer to that. Some, sometimes teachers want to teach beyond syllabus for welfare of students for current job market. How to, how to teach students it's important beyond exams. That is the connection and relationship between the teachers and the students. And if the student believes that this teacher is doing something great for me, I'm pretty sure that they are going to cooperate with you. And if at all we are going to be exam oriented, we need to make sure that they understand the value what you're trying to impart. So it is based on the relationship and how we are going to bring it up. Put opportunity as one objective while framing curriculum and outcome based curriculum. Shall we put opportunities? Definitely. Uh, Prabhu has a uh, question. In outcome based curriculum, shall we put opportunities as one objective while framing curriculum? Definitely. That is going to be one of the objectives, not just putting only the opportunities. You need to talk about that and explore about the opportunities. What is the way we are going to reach that opportunities? Thank you, Mr. Prabhu, for asking that question. How the backward design is used for constructive alignment in OB. Can a faculty ask? Yes, Saravanan? I, I think we are taking more time. I think with this, uh, we can. Yes, Move yeah. Um, somebody asked about a question. I'm not able to read it about NEP and giving the marks to agriculture. Let us try to shift our mindset from the marks. Don't worry about the marks. If at all you are pushing the child to the agriculture, make sure that he likes it or not. If he likes it, he should be the expert. We need to come out of that. Now we, we need to understand the dignity of labor. First, we need to respect everybody. It is not that if somebody is a doctor, I'll respect. If it is somebody is going to be a janitor, oh, we have to respect everybody, the job. If you enjoy your job, then th that is so important for us. So. Thank you for all your questions and uh, queries, sir. So thank you, sir. Excuse now, me, let me. us move on to the valedictory function. Mm -hmm. I invite Professor V. Balakrishnan, head of the Department of Curriculum Planning and Evaluation, Teachers Education University, to give felicitation. So unmute your mic, sir. Hello? Ah, yes, we can hear. Yes, sir. A pleasant afternoon to all of you. I deem it a great honor to deliver presentation address on the uh, remarkable occasion of well directed function of five day international virtual faculty development program on outcome based curriculum organized by the Tamil Nadu Teachers Education University and Paradise University, Trichapan. Outcome based curriculum is a learner centered approach to the education that focuses on what a student should be able to do in a real world upon completion of their course or program of study. Learning outcomes are complex statement of 
the primary skills knowledge attitudes abilities proficiencies the learner will own at the end of the course the outcome based curriculum is carefully constructed by first determining the outcomes then designed it to backwards by carefully determining authentic assessment choosing building relevant learning activities and learning experiences selecting appropriate goals content and teaching methodologies the process ensures that the learners are able to demonstrate achievement of outcomes and the learning outcomes learning activities learning methods and assessment are aligned the outcome based curriculum contract with the traditional curriculum which primarily focus on the content or resources that are available to the students which are called inputs but the outcome based curriculum uses the methods which are learners under and that focus on authentically measuring students performance while at outcome represent the destination of learners journey the route equipments tools and methods of reaching the destination are flexible this means instruction are still able to customize instruction methods and learning activities in a way that is responsive to the uniqueness of their learner there are four important principles for outcome based curriculum the first principle is clarity of focus this means that everything teachers do must be clearly focused on what they want students to know understand and and be able to do in our words teachers should focus on helping students to develop the knowledge skills attitudes personalities that will enable the students to achieve intended outcomes that have been clearly articulated sir excuse me sir unmute sir sir your voice is not audible no hello hello uh, yes sir yes sir hello uh, ah yes sir yes sir the outcome based curriculum leads to learning outcomes which in turn provides a strategic way to enhance the quality of teaching and learning it prepares students for the rest of life life context in which they will need to apply what they have learned in their course or program of study it provides a framework to align teaching learning and assessment methods to promote a collaborative teaching approach to curriculum planning and implementation it helps to ensure the approval and assessment of new and existing programs it provides a mechanism for ensuring accountability and the quality of teaching and learning to promote a self directed and autonomous approach it a means for students to articulate the knowledge skills attitude experience acquired through their program further to provide a tool for monitoring evaluating improving the curriculum finally it help to encourage continuity mobility between varying post secondary program and institutions i hope the five day program would dealt with various aspect aspect of by the different idea Fine and vibrant academic atmosphere for the past five days with the gracious presence of resource person Dr. Srinivasan Jagarajan sir from the ESA, Dr. E. Ram Ram Ganesh, Dr. B. Pragyadeeswaran, 
டாக்டர் என் எல் வெங்கட்ராமன் டாக்டர் சுனிதா மிக்ரி தே ஆர் மோஸ்ட் ரிவியர் அகடமிக் பர்சனாலிட்டிஸ் வித் இஸ் பார்ட்லெஸ் ரெப்புடேஷன் அண்ட் மச் கன்சர்ன் டு தி வெல்ஃபேர் ஆஃப் தி ஸ்டூடண்ட்ஸ் தே ஆர் டெடிகேட்டிங் தி அகடமிக் கேரியர் இன் ட்ரான்ஸ் ட்ரான்ஸ்ஃபார்மிங் தி எஜுகேஷனல் தியரி அண்ட் பிராக்டிஸ் இன் ஏ கிராண்ட் அண்ட் இன்னோவேட்டிவ் வே ஃபார் தி லாஸ்ட் 3 டீச்சர்ஸ் ஐ வுட் லைக் டு எக்ஸ்பிரஸ் my bow by being gratitude to all the resource persons who have delivered the special lectures for the past 5 days i feel immensely happy to offer my heartfelt appealing imposing profound praiseworthy congratulations benediction to the organizing secretary of this 5 day dr a rajeshwari aishun professor tamil nadu teachers education university and dr Yes, Amuda, Aishwam Professor, Paradas University for their initiations, commitment, responsibilities for the successful organization and the realization of idea and the plan of this international virtual program successfully. Once again, I, 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 I thank all of you for their active involvement in organizing this wonderful international event. Best of luck. Thank you for your presentation, sir. Being thankful, being thankful and expressing gratitude is an integral part of our life. In that sense, I request Professor I. Muthu Shami, head of the Department of Educational Technology, to propose vote of thanks. Thank you. சென்னை <laughs> the most revered and most respected professor m govind nand deal in control of examination kannada teacher education university chennai and the most revered and most respected professor dr swaminath registrar of paridas university tirupalli the proud registrar of tamil nadu teacher education university and the head of the department of correct and planning and evaluation professor dr p balakrishnan and the esteemed resource persons of various sessions professor dr a ramanesh director of iscd varidasan university dr v balak balakrishnan pradeeswaran nitt r chennai professor dr ramesh raman sir professor sita nagri from university of mumbai i am the professor shrinivas uh, and dhyarajan from georgia usa bullet hote hain na bolna inke inte na bolta professor madam samuda and professor a rajeshwari the organizing secretary from the sonia king five years practice development program வெரி <laughs> <laughs> to propose what up thanks on this uh, special occasion first of all uh, my pleasure as well as uh, privilege to convey my sincere gratitude and wholehearted thanks to the honorable vice chancellor of tamil nadu teacher institute professor pachanadan sir 
Sir, unmute, unmute your audio, sir. Validate your address. For delivering a wonderful inaugural address, I extend my sincere thanks to you, sir. On my own behalf, the participants, on behalf, behalf the convener, Professor V. Balakshan, and on behalf of organizing secretaries, Dr. Yev Samuda, Dr. A. Rajeshwari, and on behalf of participants, I wish to express my deep sense of gratitude to our beloved Registrar of Tamil Nadu Teacher Education University, Professor B. Balakrishnan, and the beloved Registrar of Bharati Dasan University, Professor G. Gopinath, both are a vision builder, a vision academic leaders, a very good administrators who have been kind enough to grace this uh, function and gave a wonderful presidential address and for giving and effective concluding remarks about the program. I convey my sincere gratitude once again, sir, on my own behalf or behalf of the participants of the organization secretary of the program. I would like to express my sincere gratitude to all the key resource persons, Professor Dr. E. Ramanesh, uh, Dr. Pradeshwaran, Dr. Dr. And younger Brahman, uh, Professor Sunida Mehir, Dr. Sinovas, then younger Brahman, Professor Sunida Mehir, Dr. Sinovas, Sinovas, Rajan, the renowned. Uh, scholars in the field of uh, education. I thank profusely all the key resource persons of the various sessions of the program and for an excellent and delightful presentation by making use of attractive PPTs to the participants. These are highly impressive and creative in their presentation. I am much delighted to express my sincere gratitude and special thanks to the organizing secretaries, Dr. S. Samuda, Assistant Professor, Department of Educational Technology, and Dr. A. Rajeshwari, Assistant Professor, Department of Curriculum Planning and Evaluation, Tamil Teacher Education University, for their active involvement in organizing this wonderful uh, program and for their hard work and their cooperation with their restless services for the betterment of the students of higher education, teachers, and research scholars across the country, and for their excellent arrangements made for conducting the program. Finally, I would like to convey my sincere thanks to all the fellow participants across the nation for their active cooperation and their joining in this uh, wonderful five-day national virtual faculty development program on outcome-based education curriculum. I hope that all participants have gained a lot of insight through this program with a lot of their home knowledge and information from the resource person on the various sessions of this morning virtual meet. So once again, 
Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Kindly stand for the national anthem.
you for the event, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I successfully completed the event, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Congratulations, ma'am. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank, thank you. you so much, ma'am. Happy Teachers thank Day, ma'am. Happy Teachers Day. Thank you. Um, can we leave the meeting now? Ah, yes, ma'am. Are you submitting your we... feedback form? Yeah, ma'am. We submit the form. I'm okay. Leave the meeting. Uh, ma'am, uh, I got a doubt. Yes. Uh, ma'am, uh, I've just attended uh, three days with uh, one number and the second uh, two days, other two days I've attended with other number. So I've okay. just texted you uh, the message with name. So uh -huh. is it yes. going to consider? Are you going to consider? Your mail ID, same mail ID? Yes, ma'am. Same, same. It's okay. It's okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. It. We will yes, take it. No. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Hello? Hello? Yes? Hello? Ma'am, I have submitted feedback form. Shall I leave, ma'am? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Hello, madam. Good evening. Yes, sir. Sir. Thank you, sir. Hello. Hello. Happy uh, Tuesday, yes, sir. madam. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Same to you. <laughs> Happy Teachers Day, madam. Oh. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Hello, madam. Thank you, madam. Same to you, sir. Same to you. Happy Teacher's Day. Hello, madam. Yes, sir. Uh, first of all, congratulations, madam, for Hello. a wonderful FDP. Yes, uh, madam, sir. Yes, madam, first of all, congratulations. And happy Hello. Teacher's Day, madam. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Happy Teacher's Day. Happy Teacher's Day. Thank you, madam. Uh, madam, I have submitted uh, feedback for you. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, shall I leave? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay sir. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Madam. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Ma'am, I wish you a happy Teachers Day. Okay, so thank you, Steve. Thank you, Teachers Day. Thank you very much. Happy Teachers Day. Bye. Amuda, ma'am? Ma'am?
ஏன்னா எல்லாம் வேணுமா தீ போட்டு எக்ஸ்கூஸ் மீ மேம் எஸ் மேம் மேம் ஐம் கேர் பிரபா फ्रॉम சேலம் மேம் எஸ் யுவர் ஃபீட்பேக் லிங்க் இஸ் ஹேவ் சம் ப்ராப்ளம் இன் மை மை மொபைல் மேம் ப்ளீஸ் கேன் யூ சென்ட் இட் செப்பரேட்லி டு மீ ஹலோ வை மேடம் வை மேம் சம் ப்ராப்ளம் இஸ் இன் மை மொபைல் மேம் some okay. network problem okay ma'am can you send it to me separately my phone no, number is no 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 after ma'am, we will discuss not... we will discuss our higher authority we will send it because one 50 5 days i have continuously working i mean okay. uh, observing attended okay okay, okay. Ma'am, some... due to some rain heavy rain my mobile is not working so okay, network okay. problem okay hello can i we will discuss hello? we will discuss we will discuss about our higher authority ma'am please excuse okay, me okay. please not my phone number okay okay right to a chat box right to a chat box or Uh, send it my personal number give you a personal number ma'am already you join in the group yes ma'am but okay. that uh, some problem in my mobile ma'am that's why i'm asking okay please give your whatsapp number yes i will chat your chat box note this box 98432 984 ஒரு 